What's going on, you guys? Marvin Francois here, back with another episode of Marvin's Room. And today, we have my guy, Carter Cofield, where we're going to be talking about how you can live tax-free, legally, all right? He's going to give you guys all the games. We're going to be talking about write-offs, entrepreneurships, LLCs, S-Corps, everything from top to bottom to put you in the best position to be financially free in 2022. Uh, so without further ado, let's get it rocking and rolling. My guy. I'm happy to be here. How First of all, Marvin's Room, I, the, the name of the podcast, I'm like, you, or YouTube channel, I'm like, okay. you, you can't miss with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 it's no, no, too no. good of a name. Like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I, I appreciate it. You know, someone gave it to me. Shout out to my guy, Brendan Boyd, and, and I took it and I, I ran with ran it. Ran full speed. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I love it. Love it, it, it flows. It goes no, good. Yeah, 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 I appreciate yeah. it, man. How are you, man? I'm doing great, man. You know, just flew into New York last night, you know, Beautiful. make sure I could come in for this episode. I'm just excited to give the game, man. Like, Let's go. You know, people need to hear what we're about to talk about. Right, and, right. You know, respectfully, mm-hmm. respectfully, mm-hmm. this could be one of the best episodes of your oh, show. Ooh. Give me a heads up. Come on, man. You just you just set the bar up here. Yeah. So, we we didn't we didn't had some heavy hit, hitters roll in now. I know, and those heavy hits are my friends. And uh-huh. respectfully to them, come on now, it's over. Woo. It's over. Get let's go. Let's, get let's do it. And let's get right into it. So, uh, before we, of course, get into all the all uh, uh, the game, take a second to, of course, introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are, where you're from, uh, how you got your start, and uh, a little bit about what it is that you do. For sure. So, as you said, my name is Carter Cofield. I'm actually from the south side of Chicago, mm. and many people don't know my story, so I like to at least go into it a little bit. So, born in poverty, like you know, most of we all got our own stories, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but my mom died when I was 14, mm-hmm. and my dad died when I was 16, and then we were homeless, living in a hotel. My aunt about by 16 and a half years old, right? Okay. So for me, I had a, you know a choice to make. And okay. I was like, you know, are, am I, am I going to let these circumstances make me, or let these circumstances circumstances break me? Fact. And I feel like we all have that. That point in our life where we can go left or go right, mm-hmm. and I just want to give everybody the the, the the notice that they can't choose where they want to go, right? Got so I was like, all right, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna let this make me, not break me. So I put myself through college, undergrad, master's degree, um, in accounting. Mm-hmm. But before that, I had a mentor, and mm. I think getting a mentor is so important because he gave me one amazing piece of advice. He said, if you, he said, if you want to be wealthy, wealthy people do two, do two things. They, um, they make sure that money is working for them. Facts. And they keep the IRS out of their pockets, mm, right? Okay. And he said, if you want to be wealthy, <clears throat> if you learn one of these two um, uh, insights or strategies, mm-hmm. you will never have to worry about money because people will all, always be willing to pay you. Gotcha. Right. So I have this. So I have this mindset of like you know, seventeen years old. Like, do I want to go to school to be an investment advisor, or do I want to go to school to be an accountant or whatever? So I graduated during the recession. Wow. Okay. Right. So I, got, I graduated high school during the recession. So I'm looking at the gas prices. My, you know, I'm looking at my family being unemployed. Right. So I'm like, I gotta look at the. I gotta begin with the end in mind here. Right. right you know right, what I'm right. saying? Of so I, I Google what job has the lowest unemployment rate. <laughs> That's a good start. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 my back is against the wall. I'm right, like, what right. job has the lowest unemployment rate? And CPA was number one. And for then it was just no brainer. It was no brainer. Like, All right. It was one of the two. So now this is what I'm gonna go to school for because I never wanted to not have a job and mm-hmm. everybody always needs somebody to help them with their taxes so mm-hmm. i went to school for uh accounting got my cpa worked at um one of the best accounting firms in the world and i i quote unquote made it right but then um man it's crazy how god works so um one day i was you know we, we i was studying small business taxes and how small business owners can save money because we were we were working on the on a startup company right and i started learning all these tax strategies that we're going to talk about today on how like right. small business owners save money on taxes i'm like man I should like start a consulting firm helping especially mm-hmm. black entrepreneurs because I know they don't know, right? right? So I was like, I should do it, but like I was I, I, was, I had this, I was making six figures, bro. I, right, wasn't, right. I wasn't trying to leave that job. Right. Right. But then uh one morning, man, uh, and I'll never forget the story. My cousin, I lived with my cousin at the time, mm-hmm. who's been an entrepreneur, tattoo artist all his life. And he came to my room, was like, Hey cuz, uh, what's today? And I'm like, What? He's like, bro, what's today? I'm like, it's Tuesday. Like, imagine I'm getting dressed for work, right? Right, You know what I'm saying? And he's like, uh, oh man, I thought it was Saturday. I'm like, I'm like, bro, you're a grown man. How don't you know what day of the week it is? Right, right. He was like, well, I guess you know, I do, I I do what I love to do every day. So the days of the week don't really matter to me. Mm, How you gonna drop that on me at eight o'clock in the morning as I'm about to get ready for work? Nah, nah, that just flipped the switch for you. Yeah, it just it flipped the switch, and then he went back to his room, and like, and like a week later, I left my job and I started this consulting firm helping. Entrepreneurs live tax free. Never looked back since. No, no. And how's life been since then? Our life's been amazing. Oh, I can tell. You know, I mean, you're blinding the cameras <laughs> oh, with the on, chain. You understand? It, you came in it, here with it. the nice shirt. Listen, 
I'm, that's that is major, man. Absolutely major. And now you're here, you know, what I'm saying doing what you love, educating the people on something that's pivotal. Right. Especially when we talk about financial literacy, which is the understanding of taxes. Me coming from the credit space, I feel like, you know, credit and taxes are kind of just right there in terms of if you're trying to build wealth. You know, mm-hmm. when we talk about generational wealth or becoming financially literate. You need to have a great understanding of both these things because they play such a huge role in you getting to that point. Right. Yeah. Because uh, you, te- you, te- you teach them how to get the bag, 100%. which is extremely important. Right. I teach them how to keep it. Mm. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this man about to make me throw these headphones. We didn't even get into the game yet. I love it. This is going to start. So let, 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 let's, let's dive right into it, right? So let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the tax code. So for starters, right, could you explain to the audience the difference between how tax code affects an average person who, let's say, has a career, mm-hmm. is working a nine to five, right, versus how tax code may affect someone like yourself or myself who's an entrepreneur? Man, that's a great question. Great question. So everybody watching, mm-hmm. please, you know, take a seat because this this is going to hurt. Oh, no, no. Paper. Listen, get pen, pen and paper out. Pen Note and paper books. out. It's about to get spicy. Note takers are money makers. Let's okay? go. I need y'all to take notes right now. Let's go. All Let's right. do it. So here's the thing I learned. On average, mm-hmm. the average W-2 employee mm-hmm. pays 51% in taxes. 51%. So think of that. You at home. If you're working a W-2 job, right. you're paying on average 51% in taxes. Mm-hmm. Basically, you're going to work for a year and you're working for free for the first six months. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's insane. You're working for free for the first six months. You know, IRS get their money first. Right, right, So right. the first six months of the year, you're giving your money away for free. Right. And my thing is like, that's too much, right? right. That's the, you know, the, we could pay a little bit, but not, that's too much. So mm-hmm. once I learned that, I'm like, okay, well, how can people avoid having to pay 51% in taxes? Right. And that's when I came up with this. Um, well, before that, um, the ta- but people need to, people need to understand. Mm-hmm. Is that the tax code is not something to be scared of? You don't. Okay. It's not something that you need to like, you know, pay and look away. Right, right. It's 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 actually an incentive system. I, I like to call it a game, right? Okay. Just like the money is a game, taxes are a game. And mm-hmm. in order to win any game, mm-hmm. you have to be on the right team. Gotcha. Right. So what I mean by that is that the, the tax code was created to benefit entrepreneurs and investors. Okay. And people always ask me why. I'm like, well, for for entrepreneurs, we create jobs. Mm-hmm. For every job that we create. The government don't got, don't got to create a job. That's a fact. Every job that we create is one person coming off unemployment. Facts. So we're doing them a favor so that since we're creating jobs mm-hmm. and stimulating the economy, they're willing to give us breaks. And as far as an investor goes, if you're investing money in real estate or stocks, you're putting you're stimulating the economy for every dollar that you invest is a dollar that the government doesn't have to print. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you do what they want you to do, mm-hmm. they'll give you massive tax breaks. Most people just don't know what to do mm-hmm. right so um and the second thing i think people need to understand is what i call like in the, the golden tax formula it's, just, okay. it's very simple if you can't do math bear with me it's a three-step formula let's go so you had a w-2 job I'm y- yes i do I used to, i'm not we're not gonna talk about it but yeah we're not gonna, <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk about it it's not it's not uh, it's not favorable but yeah okay gotcha so when you was at work you made money facts they snatched taxes out of your paycheck before you can even get it unfortunately unfortunately and you kept you got to spend what's left facts right but when an entrepreneur, it works a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. You make money, mm-hmm. you spend money, a.k.a. reinvest money into your business, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you pay taxes on what's left. Got you. So it's it's basically flipped upside it's down. It's flipped upside down. Got right? you, got you, got so you. So now, you know, again, you make money, you spend money, reinvest money into your business, then you pay taxes on what's left. And if mm-hmm. you have a good tax strategist mm-hmm. working with you, there won't, there won't be much left to pay taxes on. Mm-hmm. So it puts you in control mm-hmm. of how much taxes you actually end up paying. Got you. Got you. That's 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 game changing. And I, I think that's very important because a lot of people who are watching this, maybe they're thinking about getting an entrepreneurship or maybe they're not. You know, a lot of people have careers and work regular jobs. And some of those same people, they see, you know, uh, guys like Elon Musk or Donald Trump. And they're like, yo, these people aren't paying taxes. You know, they should be paying taxes. Why am I paying all this money in taxes? It's just that they're not hip to the game that's going on. Right. They're not putting themselves in position to get a piece of, you know, the piece of the pie themselves. OK. So now let's dive a little bit more into the entrepreneurial side of things, mm-hmm. right? Let me let me actually take it into my realm because I actually have a, a bit of a personal question that an entrepreneur who's watching this may 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 favor from, right? Mm-hmm. So this past first year this was my first time paying taxes, right? As a business owner? As a business okay, owner. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was that I, for if, you? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it w- it was what it was. It, we we here. We're, We're here. alive. God is good. But hey, man, the numbers I, I ain't like it. I ain't like it. But. What was funny is at the time, because it was my first time paying taxes, I didn't have a CPA that I was working mm-hmm. working with, right? So I was kind of going window shopping for CPAs. So, you know, I have my, my uh, uh, you know, fortunately enough for me, I had a bookkeeping software, Shasta Wave. It's basically like QuickBooks, mm-hmm. a free version of QuickBooks. It, you know, I had all my transactions and I was kind of going from CPA to CPA trying to figure out who would be a good fit for me. 
some of the CPAs that I went to, because I have an LLC, they were like, okay, look, because of your net profit margin, and for those people who don't know, your net profit margin is basically like your gross income minus whatever you spent in the business, and mm -hmm. the remainder is your net profit. They was like, yo, you should consider converting your LLC to an S-Corp, right? And then, but at the same time, there were other CPAs that was like, don't do that because now you got to worry about the fees. It's a lot more paperwork, a lot more headache that kind of goes into Thanks. it. So. Could you talk a little bit, and this is more so for the entrepreneurs, talk a little bit about how the difference in tax code between uh, how it how it works with LLCs versus S corps. Gotcha. So, I like I cr I created what I call my business entity flow chart because I get this question all the time. Okay. Right? And I and there's it's really actually simple when when there's a time and a place to have each entity. Mm -hmm. Right. You just got to know what phase you're in to see which type of entity that you should have. Fact. So I'll be able to answer this question and give them a little bit deeper insight. So. Um, sole proprietor is where everybody should start when they're still conceptualizing their business. Okay. You don't know what you're going to sell. You know what your products or services are. You still think about a name. Being a sole proprietor is cool because you don't even know what your business name is. Mm -hmm. Now, before you start the business, meaning before you actually go sell that first product, before you actually go sell that first service, right. you want to upgrade that sole proprietorship to an LLC. Okay. Right? So gotcha. file your art articles of organization, mm -hmm. um, your EIN, get your business bank account you're right. set. Now you can operate your business as you were. Fact. Now... LLC is great for starting out business owners, but there is a there's a net profit line item. But there's a net profit number on when you need to upgrade your LLC to an S corp, okay. and that number is about fifty thousand dollars in okay. net income. Okay. So once you make fifty thousand dollars in net income, you want to upgrade, or you should upgrade your LLC to an S corp because help, S corps help you save a lot of money on self employment taxes. Okay. Right. So we pay FICA taxes, we pay state, and we pay um, we, we pay federal taxes, we pay state. And we pay FICA. FICA is 15.3% on top of federal and state. Right. So that's why we get to that 51% number really quickly, right? Right. So um, and so the reason it's $50,000 is because when you have an S Corp, you have to, your tax costs are going to go up. Okay. You have to run payroll, which is, you know, going to be, you're going to need payroll software. But at that $50,000 mark, the, uh, the benefits outweigh the cost. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So before okay. that, you can, but it's not going to be beneficial. But 50000 and up, and the more money you make, the more beneficial it becomes, right? Mm. If you're making 100K, if you're making 100K and you switch from an LLC to an S Corp, it's gonna save you $13,000 in taxes. Got making you. that one move. Wow. Making okay. that one move. Got you. See, see, at the time, I'm not gonna say what my, what yeah, my net yeah. profit number was, but it wasn't at 50. But, you know, a lot of people were like, yo, you, you got to make the move. So initially I was thinking about it. But another thing that, that people don't know is, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, when you upgrade your, or when you switch your LLC to an S Corp, you can't go back. You understand? You 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 can't go back. You can go back. You can't go back. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so you can bring you can bring submit, your S, S corp you back to an LLC. It's called submitting a revoke of uh, uh, S election revoke letter. Say say that again, but say it slow. I want to make sure they're taking all the notes. Yeah, S election revoke letter. You okay, send so, that you send that out to your state, just basically saying that you want to uh, dissolve your S corp and want to have your S corp be uh, back and have your LLC because uh, S corp is just a tax status. Your LLC you. taxed as an S corp. You know what I'm saying? So when you you can you can revoke your S uh, corp status, you know if you get to if you have a year of business that like you you know like I'm not gonna make this amount of money, you can go revoke it. Got you. So like you said, once you get to that fifty thousand dollar mark with net profit, that's when you should strongly consider making that transition to make it into an S corp. It's right. not a, it's not a consideration. You, you should got, do it. You should, you should, you should do, do it. it. Gotcha, like, gotcha. I, did, I did the numbers for you. Like, gotcha. Trust me. You you, you will save yourself a ton of headache now. But now, let's say you're in a situation where you switch it over to S corp, and maybe the next year is not as profitable, and you go down. Do you still keep it at S corp, or would you switch it back? I recommend keeping it because again, I mean, I would assume that you should assume your business is going to keep go, making go. more money. You there know you what I'm saying? Right, so right. I think once you make it. Um, just keep whatever you're doing going, mm -hmm. and the more money you make, the more money you're going to save. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now. Now we have we're starting to get an even deeper understanding. I'm learning here. This is a master class for I me, mean, right? Look, yeah. Let's go. Having let's a podcast it. is a very good idea. Oh, beautiful. It's a <laughs> sensational idea, right? But now let's dive a little bit deeper into tax code. Let's talk about everybody's favorite word when it comes to that. Even if you don't know nothing, know nothing about taxes, you know about write-offs, right? Mm -hmm. So this is probably the biggest reason why a lot of people are going to click on this episode because everybody's trying to figure out what can I write off? What can I write off? What can I write off, right? But a lot of people don't even really understand the true meaning of what a write-off is, how it works, and how they can leverage it, right, to essentially live tax-free. Legally, right? Legal, legally. Le legally. Got, the, listen, I want to let that. Let I, first of all, I ain't going to jail for nobody. I'm not losing oh, no, no, my no. CPA license for nobody. So yeah. everything that we're going to talk about today is legal. Is legal. And, and if the IRS is watching, I was watching, I know I love paying taxes. Like sometimes <laughs> when I'm bored, I just send the IRS money just because like, yo, hold this. <laughs> what do I need money for? Right. Just, just in case they listen. Right. But let's let's dive into write offs. Right. Because everybody knows what it is. Everybody's heard of it. But people don't truly understand how they work. Yeah. Right? Let's talk about it. So. 
right, and, I, and I, I remember learning this when I was at work, mm-hmm. right? Because just because you're a CPA doesn't mean you know everything about Facts. taxes. Right. So I'm learning this. It's like, oh, okay. So IRS has a line item that says a write-off or a tax deduction, which are the same thing. Um, a write-off is any expense that's ordinary and necessary mm-hmm. um, to operate your business. Any expense that's both ordinary and necessary to operate your business. So I'm at work, so I'm thinking like, I'm, and I'm again, I'm thinking about starting that side business. Remember? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. So if I start my side business, what expenses become deductible mm-hmm. that, I, that I already have mm-hmm. the moment I start the business? So I, I wrote down a list. I had my budget sheet next to me because I was, I was a budget guy. And Love I'm it. like, all right, well, if I start this business, mm-hmm. will my phone bill be tax deductible? I'm mm-hmm. like, my customers will be calling me on there. Mm-hmm. It's ordinary and necessary. So I'll, I'll get to move my phone bill from a personal expense to a business expense. Gotcha. And I'm like, okay, what else? I'm like, internet. I'm like, yeah, I can use that. So now internet, I'm like, all right, what about like, um, my car, right? Mm-hmm. We'll talk about cars in a second, but I'm like, I can write off, if I use my car for business, I can write off a portion of my car note mm-hmm. and a portion of my insurance. Mm-hmm. And then like Apple watches are tax deductible because you can check your email. So like, I have this list of stuff that the moment, this is why I tell people at home, the moment you start the business, or even if it's a side business, mm-hmm. you're, you a lot of like maybe 50 to 60% of your personal expenses immediately become business expenses, which immediately lower your taxes that, that very same year. Game changer. Game that's changer. That's, that's, that's you're not ridiculous. spending any extra money. Right. The IRS is just paying some of your bills. Mm, say, right? well, say, say, no, say that good. again and say it slow. Because <laughs> that's a bar. That's Go a ahead. Bar. So when you move from uh, employee to uh, business owner, mm-hmm. the IRS will start paying your bills mm. because they will be paying a portion of a lot of expenses that you're already at home paying for. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, like, you know, we can we can you know we can spend money we can do this but why not let the IRS pay for some things right they they got come the on, money let them pay on. for yeah, it yeah let them let them pay for it let them pay for it come on now that's man that's huge right mm-hmm. that's game changer son you know I pulled you over today because I was doing ninety and forty and hit three people along the way <laughs> no I don't care about that what I do care about though is uh when checking our system it seems like you got a five eighty credit score right now normally. I'd give you a ticket for this, but instead I'm going to give you a link to a website called FrancoisCapital.com, right? It specializes in removing hard inquiries, charge-offs, collections, student loans, addictions, and so much more. So when you leave here, head over to FrancoisCapital.com and book your free credit consultation today, the capital way. All right, well, thank you, officer. What, What the hell is this? Are you even a cop? Have a good day. So now let's dive a little bit into, you know, different ways that we can kind of write things off legally, mm-hmm. right, for, for, for our business. One of the more popular ones that I'm sure you've seen and, uh, and a lot of people on social media have seen, the, the, the G-Wagon hack, right? The G-Wagon hack. Everybody yeah. talking we, about... We, we all made Mercedes Benz a lot of money. Yeah, oh no, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Everybody's yeah. talking about, and this is one of the main reasons I was excited to kind of bring you on here. Everybody's talking about if you buy a G-Wagon, it weighs 6,000 pounds, and because it weighs 6,000 pounds, you can write it off, this and this, that and that. Is there any tr- well uh, dive a little bit deeper into I guess how we can write off our cars mm-hmm. if it's possible and I guess what the specifics are of that whole G wagon situation yeah. with the tax write off. So let's break this into two parts, right? First, I'm going to teach you how to write off cars in general. Then we'll talk about why the G wagon deduction is so popular and it's true. Okay, it's true, gotcha. right? Um, I actually Mercedes Benz owes me a check for how many people <laughs> I walked into that store. <laughs> Got to get, get that, that, that affiliate set up. Right, Got to get the affiliate link. So. First of all, how do we write off cars mm-hmm. as a business owner? Mm-hmm. So number one, the IRS. So I want you to get the car in your business name if you can. Okay. Right? If you if you talk about business credit, I want you to get the car in your business name if you can because you're separating the vehicle from your personal name. You're also bidding your business credit. Mm-hmm. All those good things. But IRS sake, the IRS does not care okay. whether the car is in your personal name or your business name. Okay. I'm gonna say that again. The IRS does not care. Very important. Whether the car is in your personal name or your business name. The mm-hmm. IRS simply cares. Uh, what the IRS cares about is, do you plan to use the car for personal use or do you plan to use the car for business use? Gotcha. If you plan to use the car for at least 50% business use, which most people can easily prove, mm-hmm. right? Um, then all everything I'm about to say, all these deductions that I'm about to give you mm-hmm. are relevant to you. Gotcha. Right? So... So now that you have this car, whether it's in your personal name, whether it's in your personal name or your business name, and you plan to use it for business, mm-hmm. here's a list of all the expenses that are tax deductible. The interest on your car note is tax deductible. Boom. Your car insurance, car washes. Yes, R- car washes details. Keep your car clean. Got you. Repairs, mm-hmm. maintenance, tires, oil changes, um, parking. Mm-hmm tolls, all these expenses related to your car that you're currently paying from your personal account mm-hmm. 
are now business expenses if you can prove that you're using the car for business. Got you. Right? And I tell people it's really easy to use your car for business. You can draft the client meetings. Like, I, you know, if I drove here, mm-hmm. that, would, that would count as business activity. Mm-hmm. I shoot content in front of my car all the time, mm-hmm. which proves that my content, and I run ads in front of my car, so that, that proves business use. Also, I rent my car out on Turo. So Turo is a car rental platform. So even if you don't have a business, you can turn your car into a business by renting your car out on Turo, and hot. then your car will make you money, and it will save you tens of thousands of dollars on taxes. Okay, okay. Right? So that's how everybody can write off their car. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. Now, there's one thing I left out. Talk to me. I gave you a list of all these expenses, but the I left the best, the best expense out, and that expense is called depreciation. Mm, right. Okay, okay. So for those of you all at home that have bought ever bought a car, if you buy a brand new car mm-hmm. and you hit a U turn around a lot and try to give it back to them, mm-hmm. they'll only give you like ninety percent of what you just paid for. It Facts. Because the car is a depreciating asset. Mm-hmm. So due to that, the IRS is saying, "Hey, you know, Marv, you just got this car. We know it's going to pre- depreciate in value, so we're going to give you a tax deduction because the car is going to depreciate it in value, mm-hmm. right? So." When Donald Trump came into office, he said because they wanted people to buy big cars because the car industry was 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 losing money. Gotcha. So they said, "Hey, if you buy a car that's over six thousand pounds, which is the G wagon, which is the Cadillac kind of like Escalade, we'll let you write off the full cost of the vehicle, mm-hmm. even if you didn't pay for it." Got you. Got so you. even if you financed it. Got you. Right. Okay. So I just give you a story because um, one of my clients just had this last year. All right. Had about one hundred and fifty k in net profit in their business, right? Okay. Pretty good year. Um, they were looking at a tax bill of about like 60000 Okay. So again, that, you know, it's federal, state, self-employment. Mm-hmm. And this is one hundred fifty k in profit, mm-hmm. right? So they're like, okay, um, Carter, you know, we have, we have this tax bill. Um, we don't know what to do about it. So I'm like, hey, you know, I'm walking them through. And I was like, are you in the market for a new car? They were like, hey, yes, we, we are. We just had a kid. We want to get the new Tesla Model X. Mm-hmm. Tesla Model X just happens to be just over 6,000 pounds. Gotcha. Now, the car is about 150K. Mm-hmm. So, what they did, they just went in, put $10,000 down, mm-hmm. and they got the, and they financed the rest. Mm-hmm. Due to the fact that the car weighs over 6,000 pounds, they get a $150,000 tax deduction the year that they financed the car. So, they, they went from having a $60,000 tax bill right. to a $0 tax bill. Got you. So, they save. Six, well, you know, put the ten thousand down, so they say fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars in taxes by getting the car they wanted. That's absolutely insane. Okay, okay. So then, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to throw these up for. Hey, that is that is okay. But now, to kind of uh, to clarify, I guess for the pre prerequisites for the car, it has to be over. It has to be over six thousand pounds. So if it's less than six thousand pounds, mm-hmm. you still get to depreciate the car. They just give you a cap. Per year. Got you. So okay. it's, the cap is, you know, if a car is under 6,000 pounds, it's 18K you can deduct for the first year. Okay. 16K for the second year, 9K for the third year, and then 6K every year until the car's value is gone. Got you. So this same $150,000 example, it would take you a long time to fully depreciate. depreciate because the car is just weighs less. Exactly. But if it weighed more, then if, it's like one, two, three. Exactly. And people like don't think you know how much a car weighs. Okay. Right, like when you Google a car, <laughs> seriously, you'd be surprised. Right. Um, Google when you Google, first of all when you Google the vehicle, mm-hmm. Google the vehicle's gross weight. Okay. Not the so there's two weights when you when you look up a car. There's the curb weight mm-hmm. which the dealership uses, mm-hmm. and then there's the gross weight which the IRS uses. Mm, that's a bar. So the Porsche Cayenne is a small car. Right. It's over six thousand pounds because the electric the electric battery is so heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So literally Google your favorite cars and Google the car's gross weight. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you'll be surprised at how many cars meet this six thousand pound requirement. And like, yo, like and this is the last year you can do it. Really? So if you don't if you haven't moved fast, like move on this deduction fast, because after this year, it goes from hundred percent to eighty percent. Then wow. it goes down to sixty percent. Then it go every year until it gets down to zero. So I, I tell people this. With a sense of urgency, right? My, mm-hmm. my mentor tells me this all the time. Success loves speed. Mm-hmm. Slow feet don't eat, right? So if y'all <laughs> want to get this deduction, y'all better move fast. I'm serious. Is there any reason in particular why it's starting to kind of go down after this year? Or is it kind of... Well, so when they put the... the Trump put this into act in his, you know, uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And he just, they gave, you know, he gave them to 2022. And then okay. they're going to, they're gonna, you know, they, they can re resign it to extend it Got but you. I, you know we don't know who's in office hey i'm and, buying a car today hey, look, you understand look. Hey, listen okay that's great and, and the crazy part is not to cut you off no you like, need to understand this the client i was talking about they bought the car in december 
Wow. You retroactively get the deduction, so you don't have to buy it in January. If you get it in December, you still get the write-off as if you had the car for the full year. That's crazy. So now that makes me, now, and you, in me hearing you say this, I don't know if you heard about the story, uh, the, the Grant Cardone story it, about how you bought it's that. It's about taxes, bro. So is that that that's re because but no but one thing he said was when he bought the jet so but for those people who don't know I think Grant Cardone had like a crazy tax bill I don't remember if he said what the number was and he was trying to buy something to write it off he's yeah, like I'm it, was, buy it. It, was, it was in December too yeah yeah, yeah yeah it was also in December mm-hmm. but he was like I'm gonna buy a jet mm-hmm. right and he was going all over the place couldn't buy a jet he wired some company money ended up getting the jet but one thing that he said was when he bought the jet not only did it write off his taxes for that year it wrote, wrote off taxes I think for the next year as well yeah. is that possible yes. Your questions, bro. Let's go. Great. First Let's of go. all, shout out to Grant because he he put people on game with that, right? Right, right, right. Because you had two choices at the end of the year. Spend the money or give it to the IRS. Facts. What you want to do. Yeah. Right? So here's the thing I didn't talk about, right? Let's say um, you you know, let's say you had a hundred thousand dollar net income, but mm-hmm. the car you bought was four hundred thousand, right? Mm-hmm. You only can deduct the amount of profit that you have in your business. Okay. And whatever you don't get, you get to roll over Ooh. into future years. Right? Hold on. So, say, that, say that again. Say okay. that again. Say that Slow again. Down. Please. Slow it down. My heart. Y'all my, taking notes? My chest. Are y'all taking notes? <laughs> my chest. Say it again. Drop in the comments when you, as you're watching, yeah. you know, if you're taking your notes. Please. You know what I'm saying? Say, say that again. That's a that's game changing. game changing. It's called the carry forward rule. Okay. So um, the loss carry forward rule. So okay. if you have a loss, um, let's say, you know, if, if you have the deduction for the vehicle, let's mm-hmm. say you have 100000 in net profit, mm-hmm. but you go buy a G-Wagon. G-Wagons are going for like 350 400 now because they're going 100 over MSRP okay. because everybody are bu- is buying them. So if you have $100,000 profit, but you got a $400,000 vehicle and you want to depreciate it, mm-hmm. you can only depreciate it down to zero. Got you. And then er- everything else that you don't use, you will Real. carry forward into the future years. Got so you. a Greg Cardone story, I think he's wired $150 million, I believe. Some crazy number. Yeah, so if his, his business only made $50 million, mm-hmm. he the, got the right out the 50th of this year. And then the 100 rolls 50, off. Exactly. Ooh. So now he's not paying taxes for four or five years. <laughs> Set it down. I told you, bro. We're not playing. And like, y'all, I tell people all the time, if you want to pay less tax, simply change the facts. And mm. it's up to you to change the facts, right? Mm-hmm. He said, I'm not, all right, bet. I'm not, I'm not thinking his tax bill probably like 30 million. He's like, nope, I'm going a, I'm to a finance this jet or whatever, get business credit, whatever. It's now I don't pay taxes for three, four years. Crazy, crazy. And like you said, it don't got to be a jet. It could be a car. It could be a car. It could be a, um, any type of equipment, right? You know what I'm saying? It, it could be a um, RV if you want to just travel in your RV. Like, you got options. <sighs> You got options. So now another question I would have is, does this also apply to real estate? Because real estate, you know, the value of the property goes up, it goes down depending on the market, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for that to kind of also play into, is there, like, there may be a real estate investor watching this, Mm -hmm. right? Is there a way for them to now use that asset that they purchased, this investment property, and use it as a a tax write-off for themselves as well? Absolutely. So real estate is the most tax advantage asset you, you will ever have. Okay. It's like taxes on steroids. Okay. So... There's this concept that I, I, I deem, um, I call, um, earn in pocket, lose on paper. Okay. Earn in pocket, lose on paper. And all that means is that real estate is one of the few assets where you can earn money in real life, like physical cash in your pocket, mm-hmm. but you lose money on your tax return. Mm. So you don't pay taxes on the money that you earn. Gotcha. Because, so I'll give you an example of my property, right? I have a half a million dollar property in Chicago. Okay. It, the net profit on that property is about $1,500 a month. Mm-hmm. So eighteen thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I'm making eighteen thousand dollars cash money in my bank account, mm-hmm. but my taxes they say something different, because just like you can depreciate a car, you can depreciate a real estate property. Okay, so my property costs a half a million dollars. Okay, and now when real estate, you have to if you want to find out how much your depreciation deduction is, you take the amount the the, the amount that you pay for the property divided by twenty seven and a half. Say that again. You take the value of your property Boom. and divide it by 27 and a half. So let's do this together. Let's so, go. Um, let's go. $500,000. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me find it. 500K. Divided by 27.5. 27.5. How much is that? 18,181.8182. Eight, so 18,181. Basically. How much was my profit from the property? 18,000. So you could write the... <laughs> it's a different game being played out here, it's man. That's crazy. It's a different crazy. game being played out here. So basically, you're able to write all that off. Just all like that off. So like that, that. So I'm my my, my property is losing money on paper. Right. Right. And I get to take those losses against my ordinary income right. other places. But I'm actually keeping cash money in my bank account from this real estate property. Wow. Not to mention, mm-hmm. as the value, 
I might say that for the next. I don't know, man. Like, it's, 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 I mean, it's up to you. Okay. We here. We here. You know not, what I said? not to mention, as the value. So now my, my property is worth six hundred fifty thousand. Got you. I bought it five hundred thousand two years ago. If I wanted some money, let's say I, I say I had a crazy, you know, investment I could, you know, a purchase I wanted to make, mm-hmm. I can go borrow a hundred thousand dollars of equity on my property, right? And I don't pay taxes on that money. I can use that money to invest in another property. So you could refinance the mortgage, take the equity out the crib, but you don't have to pay taxes. Because loans it. are not taxable to Ooh. the IRS. So now I'm getting tax free money from my asset that I'm not even paying taxes on in the first place. Ooh. I'm making tax free cash flow from the asset. Okay. And I can go borrow tax free money against the asset to go, go to go buy other assets that I won't pay taxes on. Oh, real estate is ridiculous. It's, Hold it's on. ridiculous. This and this, of all the different like fields and this is the number one it's for tax event. We can do a whole another episode on real estate investing. Bro. Oh, we oh we we, we, have, we we just scratched the surface on that. I'm getting goosebumps, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. This is wow. Yeah, wow, 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 wow. I mean, damn. See, aren't taxes fun? That's why I tell people like, like taxes. People get so like people like how how you know how do you talk about taxes all the time? Or mm-hmm. people like you know I don't want to learn about it. Like it's fun when you know how to work it. One hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Like I'm teach like when I when I tell people they can live tax free because like I mean one of my quotes is tax free living. They're like, can I really live tax free? I'm like, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. If you decide to get the information Fact. on how to do that, because yeah. information changes changes situations. Now, but not without implementation. Not without implementation. Come on, man. Come on, come on, man. on. Come on, come on, come on. We here. We here. We here. We here. We here. We here. Okay. No, let's keep it going. Now we got to keep this because there because. People may be watching this now like, okay, that's probably all the different ways that you could write tax off. We're, we haven't even scratched the surface Bro. yet. Oh, it's, it's, it's a different game being played It's a here. different game can being we, played Can we keep going? Is it all right with you? It's, it's more than okay with me. Let's talk about, this is, a very, this, could be, this is a very big one, especially for you know guys like yourself and myself. Let's talk about travel, right? Because as entrepreneurs, you know, as we're building our businesses, we're going from state to state, city to city. We're networking. We're going to these conventions. We're meeting people. You know, we're, we're, we're building our we brand. We met at a, at yeah, a, we met at a, at, a, at a convention. Right, right, yeah. right. You know, so networking and doing all these different things to kind of just take ourselves to the next level. Travel is also another big one, right? People are flying from coast to coast each and every single week, each and every single month, and don't even know that that's another way mm. that they can, you know, leverage the tax code to get some write-offs. Could you talk a little bit about uh, the game, about how we can turn some of these trips that we're planning into write-offs for our business as well? Yeah. So your boy travels. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Like your boy, your boy travels, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And I, and I t- always tell my you know, my mentees and some of my students, like, you know, I ask them, like, do you like to travel? And like, yeah, I love to travel. I say, you know, you want to know what's better than traveling? They're like, what? Traveling and getting the IRS to pay for the trip, mm. right? Tax free traveling is what we're talking about, right? That's a fact. So I'm gonna give you all a, a play on how to get the IRS to pay for all your trips, right? How to write off all your trips. Okay. So this concept is called wrapping a weekend. Okay. Wrapping a weekend. Everybody take notes. Wrapping, wrapping a weekend. A weekend. Okay. Right. And this is how you can turn any personal trip mm-hmm. into a business trip by mm-hmm. following these steps, right? So let's say I'm like, hey, Mar, if we come come to uh, Miami, we we kicking it for my birthday. Let's go turn up. You like, all right, cool. I'm like, bro, we, you know, coming up, we, we getting there on Friday, we leaving on Sunday. That's a personal trip, mm-hmm. right? No, no doubt about it. We're going to kick it for my birthday. Mm-hmm. But you smart. You're like, hey, man, look, um, instead of coming in on Friday and leave on Sunday, I'm going to come on Friday and I'm going to leave on Monday. Okay. Right? And doing that, I want you to find business activity mm-hmm. on Friday in Miami, mm-hmm. and I want you to find some business activity in Miami on Monday. Okay. Right. And people always get confused. Like, well, what's business activity? Business activity is very simple. It could be taking a customer out to lunch. If you mm-hmm. have clients out there, taking a business partner out to dinner. We've done business together. So we, us going to dinner is business activity. It could be going to a conference. Like we were in Vegas at a conference. Or it could be, and everybody write this down. If you if you don't have customers, if you don't have a conference, go to eventbrite.com. Mm, okay. Eventbrite.com. And you can find a networking event mm-hmm. in your industry in any city That's on Eventbrite. Right. Go there, shake hands, kiss babies, mm-hmm. get your badge as proof of, con- <laughs> of as evidence of being at the event. Stay for an hour, right? Right. That you do that on Friday, you do that on Monday. The the, the IRS now deems the whole trip mm-hmm. to be a business trip. Okay. So it don't matter what you do over the weekend. You mm-hmm. can sit my ties on the beach. You can now write off your flights, one hundred percent of the flight costs, okay, one hundred percent of the meals. And one hundred percent of your lodging, your Airbnb or your or your hotel. Crazy. So wait, no, no, but watch this now, right? Mm. We're here. Mm-hmm. Today is a Monday. Today is a Monday. You came to New York. Mm-hmm. We're here. We're shooting this podcast. This podcast is is for my business and, and it's for your business. So absolutely. By, by by your definition, this this counts as business activity. Oh, so that means we we could, you could write off this trip. You think I'm not? 
Come on, man. I'm just asking Come on, first class on the way back home. I'm just, come on. I'm, I'm, I, 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 ain't, I, ain't, I ain't taking a six-hour flight not taking first class. Yeah, no, no. That. That'd, be, that'd be insanity. That'd, that'd be insanity. insanity. But no, so, okay, wow. wow. Okay, wow, 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 wow. So now my question is, let's, let's, let's to, just to kind of break it down a little bit more. You said you would come in on a Friday, you would leave on a Monday. Does it have to be that exact span of time or do you do it in that way just to ensure that you're able to go to two different business activities? Well, so I, I do it. I teach people that way because most people are trying to go out of town on the weekends and kick it. And this is a strategy that you can use where you can, like, you don't have to work on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. You know, to write off the whole trip. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I teach people this strategy so that they can they can have do whatever they want on the weekend, mm-hmm. but still write off, their, write off their entire trip. Now, if you decide to go somewhere for two weeks and you could do business activity every day, you can write off every single day. Gotcha, gotcha, right? gotcha, gotcha. I just don't want people to have to feel, like, feel obligated to find business activity on the weekend. Mm-hmm. But, like, when I'm traveling out the country, and I'll, I'll give you another play on this. Let's go. So we go into it? Let's do it. Okay, I mean, are we here? We're here now, right? We're here. Y'all getting all the sauce. Let's go. Hey, look, and this is just the first thank, one, Thank y'all host. Thank okay, y'all host. Let's go. Let's do it. So this is a play. Come on. Let's go. Okay. I call this the B-Day, the, the B-day play, right? So that one I gave you, that, that's that's cool, right? But I, I'm an international guy. Okay. I take one I take a one-month trip out the country every three months. Really? July, I'll be in Europe all July. Goodness, what, what, where in New York? If you don't mind I'm me asking, just, I'm just I'm start I'm starting in London and Barcelona. Then, this man said starting in London. Yeah, because I don't know where I'm going. I just I just pick pick the places. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it after. <laughs> we'll talk about it after. Go 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 go. So let's say you know you want to have your birthday out the country for, you know, five days or whatever. Got you. Right. First of all, you need to have entrepreneur friends. If you don't have, if you're an entrepreneur without entrepreneur friends, you're doing you're doing yourself a disservice because right. if you're an entrepreneur hanging out with employees, you go be the employee again before you know it. Yeah, well, there you go. Right. That's so a gem. that's a fact. <laughs> so, yeah, but went over a lot of people's head, but like, hey, look, yo, who you hang out, who you hang around is going to be who you become. Right? There you go. So, um, you can go out the country. Say you're going to go go to Brazil for five days. Mm-hmm. That's a personal trip. Or you can have your birthday be a mastermind, right? Which now you're inviting your five business partners out the country. Mm-hmm. You pick, you know, y'all having. Uh, a two-hour mastermind each day. Each person is teaching a new subject. Mm-hmm. You document the the meeting. You document the attendance. You document the mastermind. And now that is a five-day. That's not a five-day birthday trip. That's a five-day mastermind out the country. And you're not going to write off that entire trip. The lodging. My Airbnb was like, I did this in Columbia. Yeah. And, and we wrote off the Airbnb. Mm-hmm. We wrote off the, uh, the food and wrote off our flights. And we documented the mastermind. We made a lot of money from that event because we were giving some game to each other. Right, right, right. right? right. But we also have fun. Mm, and that's another play right there. Play. So you're basically leveraging your birthday trip and turning it into a business trip by right. calling it calling it a mastermind and doing a we did two hours a day a session and then the rest of the day was writing that thing off. Writing that thing off. So now, but now that's that's interesting because I've seen some of my entrepreneur friends. What they'll do is when they go travel to like different cities or out the country, they'll like go on IG live for like an hour and yeah. then just give game. Because then I I make money off IG live. Right. That's, that's proof, you know, so the IR, when, when the IRS is asking, is this legit business activity? The mm-hmm. question that they're asking is, does it have a chance of bringing in the business revenue? Got you. I don't, every time I go live, I make money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if I go live and I make money from that place, then that counts as work. And that would now make it a business trip, which now can you can use as a, come on, come man. Come on now. Let's go. Why are people giving away 50% of their money when they don't have to? Come on, come on. I think, you know, it's funny. Actually, I've heard you, and you can speak a little bit more about this. You actually made a, because this references everything you just said. I've heard you say on uh, another interview, we something about it's okay to pay the IRS, but don't leave a tip. <laughs> yeah. So one of my favorite quotes is that, you know, it's okay. We, as a CPA, right, we uh-huh. all should pay the IRS what we legally owe them. Facts. But let's not leave a tip. Facts. There you go. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the average person overpays taxes from ten to $20,000. The average person. Mm-hmm. Meaning that they paying more than they have to. And let me tell you something. The IRS will never call you and say, hey, you, you gave us too much money. Let's right, right. Get, get some of this money back. Right, right, right. Right? So my thing is like, you know, let's not leave a tip. People tip in the IRS five figures, but don't tip their bartenders or their waitresses. I don't understand. Crazy. Okay. So now let's 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 now... Let's come back full circle to write-offs, right? Because you just gave a lot of different game and a lot of different plays on how we can take things that we're probably already doing and leverage them to not to to be able to live tax free legally, mm-hmm. right? But now, one thing I've heard going back to when I was kind of window shopping for CPAs, the CPA that I have now, uh, one thing they told me as it pertained to writing off was like, yo, you know, you want to kind of tread a very thin, a very, I guess, thin line. You're treading a very thin line because. Or you're you're gonna be treading a very thin line because you don't want to write off everything to the point where, you know, you're you don't look lendable to banks or things of that nature, right? So could you talk a little bit more about that? Is there like a line that you don't want to cross when it comes to writing off? I, I mean, you know, playing the tax write off game, or is it like, nah, man, go crazy? 
Yeah, so this is a great question, bro. You got some good questions. Bro. I appreciate it, man. Hey, I look, try. I'm, hey, your boy comes prepared. Hey. If y'all think that he's winging this, he don't no, win no, anything. No, no, no. Come on, man. All right, so let's go. There's two ways to overcome this, right? People ask the question all the time, like, if I write off everything, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a car, yeah. how can I get loans if I don't have any income? So there's two ways to fix this. Number one, there are a lot of lenders now that understand the way entrepreneurs operate. There mm -hmm. are more entrepreneurs created in the last two years than the last 10. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are lenders that say, OK, we understand that entrepreneurs are going to have low net income because they're writing everything off. So instead of looking at two years of tax returns to give them funding, we'll instead get six months of their business bank statements. Mm -hmm. Right. And as long as you can prove that you're making three to five times of the rent or mortgage, we'll, you know, as far as income in your business bank account, we'll approve you for the loan because we understand how business owners operate. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is if you if you go to those loan companies that specialize with entrepreneurs, they mm -hmm. do charge you a higher interest rate because. You're more risky. Right, right. 100%. Right? Or you can do it this way. Talk to them. Well, let me sit up. Let me sit up. Let me sit up. Let me sit up. Be careful. I, I will I will slap this microphone <laughs> down. Be careful what you about to say next. Okay. I will I will tear some stuff up in the studio. <laughs> go ahead. Go. Let's get into it. And I I've only gave this away for free one other time. Let's go. On this, on Let's this. go. So look. Let's go. Right. Pen, get, paper, notes. Pen, paper, notes. All Let's right. get it. Focus. So you're like, all right, Carter, you know. It's the end of the year. I want to write everything off, but I want to buy a home next year, and I, and I want to buy a car next year. Mm -hmm. And I know if I write everything off, I ain't going to be able to get the loan. So I'm like, all right, cool. Here's what we're going to do. We're not really going to write anything off. We're going to show a, a lot of income this year. And you're going to have to pay taxes. So we're going to you know, show a hundred grand. You, know, you might have to pay $20,000 in taxes, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Then after you, know, you pay your tax bill, I want you to go ahead and get your property. Go ahead and get your car. Got your property, got your car, got a great interest rate. Cool. Now let's have some fun. Now what we're going to do, mm -hmm. we'll go file an amended tax return and recapture mm -hmm. all of those deductions that we didn't take. So now we go add those, the car, the clothes, all, all the stuff that you can write off. Now we go add it back, file an amended tax return, get all that money back that you just gave to the IRS. Because mm -hmm. we could file an amended tax return up to three years mm -hmm. after we file. Right? So you pay the taxes, you get your loans, you file an amended return, you get that 20 grand right back in your pocket. <laughs> I, I, I'd break this microphone if I could, brother. I'd, that's insane. Yeah, so there's no rules about you can't go back and refile, right? Because gotcha. a, lot, a, lot a lot of people after hearing this episode mm -hmm. are going to realize how much money they left on the table last year. And, and they're, they're going to go, go back and do the amended tax return. Exactly. Gotcha. So we're just doing this proactively. We'll get, we'll get that property, and, you know, get that, uh, get that car, get everything, January, February, March, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we go file a minute return, get all your money back, and then we just beat the system. Easy peasy, love and squeezy. You already know. Love it. Goodness gracious, <laughs> goodness gracious. Okay, this is this is. Uh, let me sit up. This is some stuff, man. This is. Uh, hey, look, I, look. I know my stuff, man. Yo, and what's crazy is, like I said, you know, credit is credit is great, but I I've always known. I mean, we all we all know, like when it comes to taxes, like I said in the beginning of the episode, like this is some game changing stuff that if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner and you're not you know, making yourself privy to these things, you're going to leave a ridiculous amount of money mm. on the table. You know what our next episode will be about? Talk about How it. business credit can help you live tax-free. Okay. I got some special strategies Hold on how business credit... Hold on. Bro, it's, I got to play. I'm going to save it. <laughs> bro, I got to play that's going to blow your mind. <laughs> let's go. Okay, so we, now we know what our next episode going to be gonna, This is going to be crazy. Okay. This is going to be crazy. Okay, so, cool. But now let, let's let's dive a little bit more into it, right? Mm -hmm. And you as a... For this next question, you as a CPA is definitely going to be able to uh, appreciate this because you probably dealt with this a lot. When we talk about, you know, becoming tax savvy and learning how to live tax free, a big part of that is planning, mm. which I feel like not a, not enough people do a good enough job of. Right. You as a CPA, you probably know if, you know, tax time is April, people wait until March. Now they're categorizing their transactions. Now they're making all the phone calls. Now, you know, I, I, I already know that for the CPA I deal with once March and April come, I can't even reach it. Like calling a CPA during April, like March and April, that's so disrespectful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, yeah. It's, it's disrespectful to yourself and yep. disrespectful to the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it is, it is, it's like hell week for y'all, man. It's, it's, it's bad. It's really, really bad, right? But a big reason for that is because a lot of entrepreneurs don't do their due diligence in terms of planning the right way so that, you know, once tax time comes, oh, they chilling, they feet is kicked up because they already did the dirty work before beforehand, right? Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about if I'm an entrepreneur, right? And I'm tapped into this. I'm like, okay, I, I got the game. I'm learning how to live tax free. Right now, at the time of this recording, we're in June. So now, from here all the way to the end of the year, this is when we should be putting things together. This is when we should kind of be making sure we have the right systems, the right softwares, right? Everything in place so that this same time next year, mm -hmm. you know, we're not giving our CPA no headaches. 
what does that look like? How do we now, how do we plan? How do we prepare? What are some different things that we can do to make life easier for us and our tax preparer come tax season next year? Absolutely, man. So I tell people all the time, um, there's two tax seasons, right? Oh, okay. And most people think it's one. Most people think tax season is January through April, boop, bop, I'm good, right? Mm-hmm. But no, there there's tax paying season and there, then there's tax saving season. Right. Right? Tax paying season is January through April. Like once the previous year closes, mm-hmm. we can't go back in time and go fix things that you missed. Fact. Right. So during January, April, all we're doing is telling you how much you owe and you gotta pay that. Right. Tax planning season is the I like to call it like the last six months of the year. So from June to December. Mm-hmm. Right. So now we're in this place of all right, not only do you have to get your stuff organized because you can't write off what you don't track. That's right? a, that's facts. Right. So, but now we're also planning to see what strategies work for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Are you, do you have kids? Right. Do you have do, you, do, you, do your kids work in your business? Why not? Do you know you, you can pay each of your kids mm-hmm. up to up to thirteen thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. and you and they don't pay taxes on that money, and you get a write off. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're we're talking about these different strategies based on who you are and what your business look like, and so. If you if we do this planning June, July, August, September, December, I mean, uh, you know, the rest of the months, by the time December comes, mm-hmm. not only are you going to be good, you're going to know exactly how much taxes you're going to owe. Right. right. The people I work with, we don't got to have a conversation in January, February. They already know based on the planning we've been doing mm-hmm. how much they're going to owe mm-hmm. the next year. Mm-hmm. So they're kicking back and chilling. So mm-hmm. the smart people meet with their CPA proactively bef- before the end of the year when they have the time to talk with them. And mm-hmm. then that way during the, the hell week, they don't have to bother. Good. Got you. Software wise, do we need QuickBooks? Yeah, yes, you do. The, I'm, hey, it's I'm, a must. Yeah, it's a must. And I don't have an affiliate link with QuickBooks yet, but the they, they, they might have sent, they need to send you They one. need to send me one, yeah. man. But like, you know, QuickBooks is the, they're just the dominant when it comes to, um, the, the, the business tracker for, for everybody. You know, another good one is, um, for tracking your business miles for your vehicle. Mileage IQ is really good. When you get in your car, it just, you say business and then it tracks your miles. Um, so those are two softwares I think everybody needs. So you got to have QuickBooks. You got to have Mileage IQ. Is there any other softwares that you were, or those are just the two main ones you're like, no, you good if you got these. Or any other resources you would recommend for people to tap into where you're like, yo, if you got this, you should be fine come tax season. Yeah, I think it's, um, it, I, I think it, we'll talk about opportunity for people to tap in. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just educating yourself, right? Like, okay. Like, don't. Don't just hire a CPA blindly and expect them to know everything because I tell people all the time, you gotta when you hire a CPA, you gotta make sure one very important thing. Do they work for you or, or do they work for the IRS? Say that again, Mercedes, slow. Yeah, gotcha. When you hire someone for your when you hire a CPA for your business, mm-hmm. you have to ask the question, do they work for you or do they work for the IRS? What's the difference? So the, uh, a CPA that works for the IRS is just gonna tell you how much you can't do. Oh no, you can't write that off. Oh no, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a bad idea because they're lazy and they don't want to do. They don't want to do the research to understand if you can do it or not, and mm-hmm. they don't really just just want to file your paperwork. To be honest, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. A CPA that works for you wants to save you as much money as possible, so they're proactively implementing strategies mm-hmm. so they so that they can save you money. And I tell people all the time, like your CPA should work for you for free. Like I work the my, my mentees, I work for them for free. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is that I will never cost them more money than I save them. Facts. If yeah. your CPA is charging you ten grand, but they cha- they they save you fifty, you good. You won. You won. Right. Right. So your CPA should essentially be working for for, for free. And gotcha. it's, you know, it's an investment, not a cost. Quick question: Would you be interested in learning how to start a six figure credit repair company? Yes. Okay. What about a six figure funding business? Yes again. Okay. What about a six figure trade line business as well? Three yeses. Cool. That's all I need. Now listen, I can't say too much now because I do need to get you back to this interview. But I'm getting ready to launch a mentorship program, and quite honestly, I think you'd be a perfect fit, right? So when you're done with this video, click the link in the description. It's going to bring you to the landing page. It's going to give you all the information you need about this program, when it starts, what it's about, everything you're going to learn, and if you would be a good fit for it. We'll talk more on that page. But for now, let's get you back to the video. You talk. You we're also just talking now about uh, also educating yourself and you know once again this whole thing is just about becoming more tax knowledgeable why is it that we see and i'm sure you see it so much times you see celebrities come out and they're like yo you know my cpa stole this from me or i ended up you know they thought that their cpa was paying and they were sending them checks to, to pay the tax and next you know they look up they owe like 10 million 20 million 30 million this i would assume happens more often than we're probably made knowledgeable to is there any reason in particular is it just their their lack of due diligence or are they just very careless, very lazy. Is it because they're not educating themselves? Yeah, well, so, a lot of people hire their friends and family, which is like a mistake. Uncle Rodney. Uh, Uncle Rodney that says he Cousins does taxes. Cousins them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I t- <laughs> That's good. And I tell people all the time, like, look, um, 
experts are expensive. Like, I'm very expensive to work with. Right. But amateurs will cost you a fortune. Oh, say that again, but say it slow. <laughs> say that again, but say it Got slow. You. Um, experts are expensive, mm -hmm. but amateurs will cost you a fortune. I'm getting goosebumps. So people need to know, like, don't don't be stingy when it comes to like something as important as this, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, it doesn't matter how, some, how much somebody charges you if they're saving you more money, then it's still okay, mm -hmm. right? But I think that's that's a big problem why people end up owing and like you know just not knowing what's happening. Got you. Because they blindly trust their family, like you know, and it's that's not that's not okay. Man, man, this is this is this this might be my favorite episode, brother. Hey, I, hey look and look and, and I, t I told you, man, like coming in, I was not playing. No, no, you wasn't <laughs> playing. Yeah, you wasn't playing. And we're not. And this is just this is just part one of the series. That's what's yeah. even crazy. Like it, we're we're definitely gonna have to um, run it back. One thing I wanted to talk about, of course, I know we have to get you out of here. I know you have you have a challenge coming up. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that's watching that's watched this entire sit down. They're like. I got to tap in with this dude. I got, I got, I, I need to learn more. They're hungry for more knowledge mm -hmm. as it pertains to tax. And I think you knew that coming into this and you were like, all right, I'm gonna put together this challenge. Talk a little bit about the, uh, the challenge you have coming up, what it consists of, how people can tap in and, you know, just the whole breakdown from top to bottom. Yeah, man. And, and the reason I did this is because like, so here's the thing, like coming into my career, I'm still from the South side of Chicago and I, I know, understand, I understand poverty mm -hmm. and I understand a lack of information. Right. And I'm expensive to work with one on one. Like my one on one fee is like is was last I did last time I did it was sixty grand a year, right? I think that's cheap, because I'm saving people a lot of money. But here's what I'm saying: just because somebody can't afford to work with me at that at that price point doesn't mean that they don't deserve the information. You said sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. One on one. Well, yeah, one on one. But if I save you a hundred, then what are we talking about? Yeah, you win. I'm gonna I'm gonna cry, but I won. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I know exactly. I won. But sorry, go ahead, go ahead. But yeah, but. And the reason I say that is because I understand that just because somebody doesn't can't afford that type of price point right. doesn't mean that they don't deserve the information. Right. So I was I was thinking, like, how can I really pour into everybody who really deserves to learn this information? Mm -hmm. So I came up with this five day training, and it's virtual. But I was like, all right, I'm a I'm a train people as my as if they're my millionaire clients. I'm gonna give them all the game, all the sauce, all the tax free living strategies mm -hmm. that they can implement into their lives, mm -hmm. and they won't have to pay me anywhere near mm -hmm. as much as my clients pay me one on one. So when I was coming up with the event, I was like, all right, five days, a thousand dollars. I thought was I thought was reasonable. My mentor was like, if you really want to touch people, it has to be cheaper than that. Okay. And I was like, oh, cheaper than that. So what I did for any of y'all watching, right? Any of y'all watching that, that want to be a part of this uh, amazing experience, it's gonna be five days for just two ninety seven. Oh, that's nothing, bro. That's water. That's forty dollars a day. Yeah, I, yeah. I never show up forty dollars a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And 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 this is gonna be you. Is it anybody else part of it, or just you straight up? Yeah. So it's, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna, I bring in special guests. Okay, you know, gotcha. I, I bring in special guests, but it's me, and they get two hours a day. They get an, they get an hour of teaching and then an hour of Q and A. Gotcha. So they get to ask me their personal. Yeah. Questions. This is like a pseudo one on one in and of itself. Exactly. Gotcha. And, and that's why I'm done. I'm doing. I'm doing one time. So look, look, y'all want to talk to me <laughs> forty dollars a day? I'm gonna do this one time. Right. But it's uh yeah. So I'm I'm gonna do this. I really want to pour back into the people, and we're entering into tax planning time. So I did this strategically, mm -hmm. so that I can really help people during the most important time, which is this tax planning time. Like I, my goal mm -hmm. in this event is to help everybody save a minimum of fifty thousand dollars in taxes. Gotcha. Minimum. So they're paying two ninety seven to save a minimum of fifty thousand dollars. They're getting you for one on one time, right, to ask their questions, which would be another sixty thousand dollars. So this is basically a damn near a six figure offer that you're putting into two hundred ninety seven dollars, forty dollars a day. You're basically giving it away for free. Well, I hope about, you know that. How about you might I might change the pronunciation. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to. Yeah, 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 yeah. We good. But this is this. This is, is crazy though. Th this this is crazy. I'm looking forward to it because I'm gonna be able to work with people who normally wouldn't get the access to me. Right. I'm gonna get to right. see the people who I normally wouldn't be able to, to work out to work with. Mm -hmm. But again. I, I didn't go get this information from the multimillionaires and all these, you know, for lack of better words, these white rooms that I had to spend 10 years in to get the information that I got. I didn't get all that not to give it to my people. Facts. That's just a fact. Like, you know, you know, um, so I believe that the secret to living is giving mm -hmm. and I want to give back as much knowledge as possible so they don't have to like, you know how hard it is to get in these rooms? You know how expensive it is getting in these rooms? Amen. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I did that. So hopefully y'all won't, y'all won't have to go through that. You right, know what right. I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just really excited about this opportunity, man. And mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna go in. Let's go. Like if if th we were here for like less than an hour, yeah. yeah. And this was, this if was... this was good, imagine you're gonna spend ten hours with me, right? 
over five days, and it's virtual. So I'm like, yo, if you you don't got to pull up nowhere, all you got to right. do is be in front of your computer and, and get the game, man. And I'm super excited about it. This is this is this is an amazing opportunity, man. And I appreciate you for. And it goes. Uh, is it gonna the challenge is what is it next week or it, no it's a, it's a few weeks it's, it's a few weeks out so by the time this episode airs by the time this episode airs it'll be it, like it, right it, around it, the corner yeah it, it'll be about maybe like a week or two out and then um, so that'll get everybody plenty of time to register and join beautiful and sign up beautiful. Um, and yeah man it's gonna, it's gonna be crazy let's go let's do it so now my, my final question to you before we start to close this thing out answer this question well fill in the blank for me right as it pertains to the challenge that you're about to do you should not join this challenge you should not Partake in this challenge if blank. You should not partake in this challenge if you was, if you enjoy working for free for six months out the year. Mm. You should not join this challenge. Okay. I mean, it's cool. That, that, like some people like free labor. If right. that's if that's for you, do your thing, king. Do your thing, queen. <laughs> but if you would rather not work six months out the year for free, mm -hmm. then I advise you to join this tax free living challenge where mm -hmm. I'm gonna break down the game over five days mm -hmm. so that this year. And no, the dopest thing about information is that once you get it, nobody can take it away from you. That's a bar. So once you learn that, that this year, you can apply it to every year of your life. And we haven't even talked about how to write off your clothes, how to write off your rent, oh, Lord. how to write off travel. We talked about travel, but how to pay your kids tax free. We haven't talked about tax free crypto. We have there's so many layers that we haven't we even go, hit man. yet. We got to do like there's over. Episodes. Yeah, there, there's over 300 write offs that you can take in your business that we haven't even hit on. So um, we're going to talk about that. All about that in the challenge that people will be able to really tap in and get more information with me. Let's do it, man. And also, where can the people find you as well? Oh, yeah. So on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, all platforms, Cofield underscore advisor on cool. all platforms. Um, they can tap in that way. I give a lot of game out on my social media platforms, but I gave a lot of game out here. Yeah, this was ridiculous. So I'm, I'm, I, I took some mental notes. I'm about to go home. I might go buy a car today. Hey, look. Might, yeah, it Look, might, yeah, it's, you, can, you can use the business credit to get it, so you ain't using your own on, money. Come on, stop it, man. Oh, this, this, hey, this next episode, this next episode is gonna be ridiculous. Yeah. But no, in all sincerity, my brother, thank you, of course, for stopping by and, and and adding value to my community, and thank you to each and every single one of y'all for tapping in. Uh, if you haven't already, tap in with my brother on his five day challenge. It's gonna be absolutely uh, ridiculous, and of course, follow him as well, and like and subscribe to the channel for Please. more content coming. What this man just gave y'all for free, like yo, for free. This will cost a like this will, this will cost a lot of money. He yeah. just looked out for y'all, so please. Come on, man. Like, subscribe, share this episode. Yes, sir. Um, because you you got some crazy stuff coming up, bro. Oh no, no, it's, 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 this summer is going to be a beautiful one, to say the least. <laughs> this 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 year, I, I feel like I'll be back in New York a lot. Oh my, no, no, with, no. My, with my other friends. I mean, you might as well you might as well just get a get a crib out here. Yeah, we're gonna be feeling a lot of. It's gonna be it's gonna be some game. But no, no seriousness, man. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for everybody for tapping in. And uh, as always, you know, I'm uh, my Marvin Francois, my guy Carter Cofield. Y'all have been good. I've been great. This has been amazing. Thank you, and God bless. Peace.